Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. So, as you can see, we've got a brand new group of 16 Zumbinis. I brought them through the Big, the Bad, and the Hungry again. And this time, instead of going south to the Deep Dark Forest, we're going north to encounter this brand new swamp world for the first time on the easiest difficulty. Let's see what's up here. Zumbinis must have something in common with their neighbor to sit on Captain Cajun's ferry. Welcome to the boat. Now hurry yourselves up and find your seat. So welcome to the second world, at least in the north version. This is Who's Bayou, and this is the first challenge of Who's Bayou. Captain Cajun's ferry boat. Seating on Captain Cajun's ferry boat is very important. Zumbinis can only sit next to each other if they have at least one matching feature. Same hair, same eyes, same nose color, or same feet. So it's a pretty simple premise, honestly. You've got this long line of seats, so every Zumbini has to have one thing in common with their neighbor. And the nice thing about this one is that he's very patient, and you can only lose Zumbinis on this one if you intentionally leave without them by pushing the arrow. So that at least is nice, but if you put a Zumbini in the wrong place, then he'll flip them off their seat, they'll fall into the water, and then just walk back up onto the bridge. So this one could require a little bit of finagling, so let's start with this little lady. Fine, sit wherever you want to, I don't really care. He's a very interesting frog guy, but he's pretty cool. So this guy has nothing in common with her, so if he tries sitting here... No, 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 no! Oh, he didn't even fall in the water. He just fell back onto the bridge. So the goal is essentially don't wind up with two Zumbinis left that don't have anything in common. So I like trying to only match up one feature at a time. So they both have glasses, go, so they can sit together. And let's see. This guy has roller skates. That guy also has a green nose. She has a propeller. She has a ponytail. That guy has a spring and normalize. That guy is normalized. There you go, you go. So here's the thing. A lot of my guys have feet, so if I can get it so that all the guys at the end only have feet, that'll be cool. So actually, I'm going to take him off. I'm going to put this spring guy here. And she has a purple nose, so we can put her here. And everyone else has feet, so that guy has sunglasses. Yes. And now we can just ah, put the rest of the guys down sure. here. So just see which feature is the most common one there and just save those for the end. And that'll be easy. Ah, sure. And now everybody's seated, so let's sit back, relax, and enjoy his fairy ride. I know what to do. 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 Color, flower, and lily pad shape too may be the keys that get them through. Welcome to the second logical challenge of Who's Bayou, the Titanic Tattooed Toads. This is probably the most unique of all the Zumbini puzzles, because it has a very weird perspective. As you can see, the Zumbinis are very tiny, and we're actually not going to click on the Zumbinis at all for this one. Let's see what this is all about. Titanic Tattooed Toads. Each Zumbini needs a Titanic Tattooed Toad to carry it across the field of lily pads to the other side. Most of the toads will follow a special path that matches the shape of the flower, the shape of the lily pad, or color of the stripe on its back. For example, a toad with a red stripe will follow a path of lily pads with red flowers to the other side. Some toads cannot cross the river at all, and none will hop diagonally. Try tracing a complete path to the other side first before sending a Zumbini across. So yes, these stripes refer to colors. These ones that have kind of brownish patterns on their back refer to the shape of the actual flower in the middle. 
Then these ones with the green tattoos refer to the lily pad shape. Yes, and again, like they said, not all toads are able to make it across. And you can put a toad on a lily pad, but only if it's actually a lily pad that they can go on. And when you set them on, a Zumbini will get on its back, and it will continue hopping until it reaches the other side. This means that if I were to put the orange guy right here, he would jump back and forth forever, and I would lose that Zumbini because I'd be forced to leave without him. And every toad can cross twice. After that, you need to find a different toad to go across. So, I like to start by getting the colors, because those, for me, are the easiest. So, we've got an orange trail here, and I just like following it with my mouse to make sure. Oh, yep, sure enough, that leads to a dead end. If there was an orange vein there, he could cross. So, the orange toad cannot cross at all. So, let's try the white one. Let's see. Cool. So, we put the white, uh, the white striped guy here. As Zombini will get on his back, and he will hop all the way to the other side. So much like the mirror machine on the easiest difficulty, this one is really all about just using your eyes, using the mouse to trace the pattern, and just hoping for the best. And now he's going to swim over here, and we can put him back on the lily pads. Alright, now let's see if we can get the blue guy across. So, this is the only place where the blue flower starts, and it ends very quickly, so no. We cannot send the blue toad across. How about the purple one? Got a path. Yep, we got a path on the top, so the purple guy can go here. And let's see if the red guy can go across. We've got some red flowers here. Yep, that's pretty much a straight shot for the red guy, so we'll put him here. So now the white guy, since he went across twice, he's just going to swim away. Whereas these two, when they get to the end, they're going to swim back, and we can put them on their path again. And after that, that's all the cover ones we can use. There's no path for the orange and the blue one, so I'm going to work on the flower shape next. And I save the lily pad shape for last, because that tends to be the one that screws me up the most. Which, by that logic, I should probably do that one first. But, no. I am not... <laughs> that's probably not a good idea, actually. Cool. Alright. So you can put the color ones on simultaneously, but if you put a color one on with a pattern one or a lily pad one, then they can end up having roads across that overlap with each other. And that can sometimes, very, very rarely, but sometimes result in them just hopping infinitely because they keep hitting each other in the middle and thus can't proceed. Alright. So let's look at the X. Are there, is there a path across filled with nothing but X's? X, 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 X. Yes, there is. Alright. So tracing that backwards. Alright. On this white X, we'll put him... He'll hop across. How about the flower shape? I actually, should, it's probably a better idea to trace from the end. Yeah, so on the red flower, that can go across. Then we'll try the diamond shape. Yes, putting it on the purple diamond is pretty much a straight shot. <laughs> Um, did that guy- okay, I was about to be- did that guy get stuck, but no, he just had to wait for the other one to be done. Alright. So that's them, now we have to look for the lily pad shapes. So there are Y-shaped lily pads, X-shaped lily pads, hourglass-shaped lily pads, and then lily pad-shaped lily pads. Let's find a route that works. So, there's a good long line of hourglasses here. Hourglass, hourglass, hourglass. Okay, on the blue flower, there's an hourglass root. 
Now we need to find one over. So x x x x x x x x. The x's and y's are easy to get confused. All right, on um, the purple diamond. Cool. And because they each go across twice, all we have to do is wait for them to come back, and we will be all set. It took me ages to figure out the lily pad shape because I kept picking the X lily pad shape. I'm like, why isn't he going on the X's? But I was looking at the X's on the flowers. And there we go. Once those two toads hop all the way across, we will be all set to go. This one is more tedious than anything. This is also one that's like... The jump from the first difficulty to the second difficulty changes pretty dramatically, and then after that, it's like, well, this isn't too bad. Once you figure out the lily pad shape is one of the tattoos, well and if you can look closely, it's not too hard. But this is one of the reasons why I do not like this route as much as the lower route. Zoom beams will get a rise out of these stone hexes if they can make the right connection. There was one Zumbini that was cloned and he looked like a caterpillar. That was amazing. Here's one that's very interesting. This is the last logical challenge of Who's By You, The Stone Rise. And this is basically a more advanced version of Captain Cajun's Ferry, and we're about to find out why. Stone Rise. The Zumbinis must link together and to turn the stone elevators on and continue their journey. Link pairs of Zumbinis together according to one common feature, such as red noses. The symbols on the stone pad show what you what attribute the Zumbinis must share. So as you can see, that is a nose. So the Zumbinis who sit here have to have the same nose. That's eyes, the Zumbinis that sit next to you here have to have the same eyes. That's hair, so hair has to be shared in common. And then feet. So this one is actually really challenging, because it's basically a Captain Cajun's ferry, except you have, it specifies which features they have to share. You're not allowed to just do any feature you want. So as such, this one can be a bit problematic, even on the first difficulty. So let's start with you. Same feet. You two are the only ones who have roller skates, so let's put you guys there. Yeah. You two share the same feet. You two share the same eyes. You two share the same nose. So we have two guys with uh, uh, bald tufts, three guys with bowl cuts. All right. You guys have the same nose. Hmm. No, that's not gonna work. Uh, okay, that's that's a bit hard. That's a bit bad. All right. So let's match up the two bald guys. Hmm. Then we need two other guys with the same hair. How about these two guys? Two people with the same eyes. We have got none left, and we also have none left with the same color nose. Ouch. Fortunately, much like Captain Cajun's Ferry, the only way you can fail this one is to either click on the map or click on the arrow before, ahead of time. Alright, so we got two guys with the same hair and then two guys with the same nose. So we need to borrow somebody who has the same color nose as us from somewhere else. 
How, okay, let's do this. We're gonna pull her away. She has the same color nose as that guy. This guy is the same color, uh, has the same eyes as her. And then these two guys have the same hair. So it's really just about finagling at the end and often borrowing some beanies from other areas. You did it! You saved them all! Yay, they're all connected. And now, if we hit go... That's pretty cool, I must admit. Amazing indeed! So, as you saw off screen, I just cleared the Mountains of Despair with this group of Zumbinis, so they could enter Zumbiniville, and now we have double the population, and we got a new building thanks to doing Hawu's Bayou on the earliest difficulty. This swimming pool salutes the Zumbinis who calmed Captain Cajun, rode tattooed toads, and knew how to network when traveling was not so easy. April 3rd, 2018. If we go back to the map, oh, well, I guess you have to do things three times before it increases in difficulty. I know what I'll be doing off screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you tune in for the next time. We're going through the big, the bad, and the hungry again, but this time on Oh So Hard. I hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.